Wow. I've got my own museum. <laughs> Look at this. Hey. Come and join me. We're going to take you on a little journey. Wow. They said he might never win a Grand Prix. He's proved the critics wrong. These are possibly the biggest eyes in Formula One. It's one of those races that I just did not want to end. You know, some drivers say I just wanted to get to the finish. I was leading, wanted to get over and, and done with. But I just wanted to savor every moment. 2008 was a was a tough year for us as a team, and then the winter came where we thought we, we didn't have a job. So a lot of hard work by everyone to, to get this car built and get it running and have a team. We got to the first test in Barcelona and Shove, my engineer, looked at me and said, JB, you are one and a half seconds quicker than anyone, which was the start of, of great things, yeah. Well, if you want your champion to grab the initiative, he's doing it at the moment. Let's go, let's go! We are world champions! World champions! Brings us rather conveniently to that big challenge and to yeah. possibly two images that show your, your greatest race, if I may say so. You, you will probably put it down as a world championship in Brazil, but the race that people still talk about today is Canada. You never think it's actually going to happen. And when it does happen, you know it's never going to happen again. He's got eight! Button leads the Grand Prix! <laughs> It's been an amazing journey. We at the BBC, we have a little something that we'd like to give you, which is, it's not a red book of <laughs> this is your life, but this is your 15 years in Formula One. It's a white book to give you some nice memories of the journey. And we wait, we're not going to hold our breath because we know it's going to take <laughs> some time before we know about your future, but we very much hope that we'll be adding a 16th year to that. Jensen, thank you very much. Congratulations on your career. Thank and you. Thanks for your time. Let's hug it out. Come Let's on, DC. Welcome to our viewers from around the globe. You join us just as today's practice session for the Australian Grand Prix is about to start. The teams will be visiting tracks across five continents as they battle it out for both the drivers and the constructors' championships. This year sees Honda return to the sport, reforming one of the greatest partnerships in F1 history with McLaren. Do you think they can rekindle the success they had during the 80s and the 90s? It won't be easy, but yes, I think so. It's been a tough few years for McLaren with the loss of Hamilton, Mercedes withdrawing as a shareholder and major investor in the team, and losing technical director Paddy Lowe. We'll soon learn the true performance of these cars out on track. What can we expect to see in the following session? Well, I think we're all expecting the Mercedes power unit to be particularly strong this year, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them at the front. But I wouldn't discount Red Bull or Ferrari just yet. We know they have the talent and the resources to react to any problem, so although they may be playing catch-up, I would expect them to bring some major upgrades pretty early, maybe before we even get back to Europe. What's going on guys, Arava here and welcome to the start of my Jensen Button F1 2015 career mode. Probably the most anticipated series on this channel for F1 2015 because as soon as we found out that you had to choose a driver for your career mode, that was straight away the, the choice that everyone thought I would make and even I thought I would make. But obviously we went with Vettel for season one. And I'm glad I did that because it meant I was able to get a lot faster over the course of the season. I'm definitely a lot faster than I was on episode one of that season. And now I feel comfortable enough to take on this huge challenge that is the McLaren Honda with Jensen Button. Really this season what our target will be, it won't be the championship. It won't even probably even be you know, consistent wins. It will just be to maybe get one surprise podium in the season. And I'm saying, really, if we can get over 100 points, 
in the Drive the Championship over the course of this season, that will be a success for me because I really think it's going to be a huge challenge. I'm not the fastest guy out there in the community and uh, I think it's going to be a real, real struggle. But we'll see what we can do. Hopefully we can at least get consistent points. I think that will be the aim and hopefully we can then tally that up to over 100 points over the course of the season. But that is going to be my aim and as you've seen already at the beginning of this video the editing is back the editing is back the trademark of my channel is back and it's good to be back with that trademark this series will not be daily because as you can see, see and hopefully tell the editing takes a while it's a long while so it's not going to be daily I'm hoping to get at least three episodes out a week maybe four at a push but definitely hoping to get three episodes out a week and that means in between these episodes there will be other things going on but Oh boy, I'm excited to start this. I hope you guys are, and you, already it'd be awesome if you guys could smash that like button for a Jensen Bun career mode. That's enough waffling. Let's get straight into the story of the practice session, and then we'll kick off for the rest of the weekend. It was a glorious morning in Melbourne for the return of Formula One in 2015, and the early news out of the paddock was that Guido Vandergaard had not been granted a super license meaning Marcus Ericsson and Felipe Nassir look set to run for Sauber. And there was a welcome first sighting this season of the Mana Marussia team, but there were question marks over whether they would run in the session, or indeed at all on Friday. At the other end of the pit lane, it was all smiles in the Mercedes camp, as the Constructors' champions geared up for comic relief. But it was no laughing matter on the track for the other teams, as Nico Rosberg set the first flying lap of the new season. And uh, he's just done a 2 minute 29.5, and that is getting close to the fastest lap of the whole weekend last year. Ferrari were the best of the rest in the first half an hour on the Albert Park circuit, but the new pairing of Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel were both around two seconds slower than Rosberg. But world champion Lewis Hamilton was gunning for his Mercedes teammate. He goes second fastest and almost the same lap time. I mean, this is what we saw so many times last year. The difference between them, 0 0.029. There was a bit of a wobble for Max Verstappen, but the 17-year-old handled his Toro Rosso like a seasoned pro. And it was a good bit of oversteer there from uh, young Max Verstappen. I went off in turn one. That's why uh, that was not good. Understood, copy that we saw that. So the honour of the first spin of the season went to home favourite Daniel Ricciardo. He just actually touched the grass on the right hand side, so he was just half a tyre width onto the grass on the outside, and that lost a little bit of grip and round he went. So as with most of last year, it was Rosberg and Hamilton leading the way, with a margin of nearly 1.2 seconds over the Williams of Bottas. Okay, so here we go for qualifying here for the first time in this McLaren with Jensen Button. We asked Jeff to hand us the tablet and we check our settings and the setup for the session ahead. Now, we're going for a very low downforce setup there. You can see three one wings, obviously, because the Honda engine is so underpowered. We need that one rear wing to help us on the straights. We've gone for three on the front wing just so I can help the understeer kind of uh, negate the understeer a little bit. And we've also put the ballast to the rear a little bit to make the car oversteer a little bit more and counteract the understeer steer we will be getting through these corners I mean the car as a whole you know through the corners aerodynamically the McLaren is not too bad but because we're going such low downforce it then turns it into a little bit worse of a car in the corner so we have to kind of uh, counteract that with some ballast but going through to the end of our first flying lap here what is this going to be it's going to be a 129 so sub 130 lap time so far so that's pretty good because in practice I couldn't manage a sub 130 but now we go on to our third flying lap and the footage is actually going to uh, corrupt a little bit and we go on to our fourth flying lap there you can see we've improved our time to 129 3xx and that is going to be a very good tasty lap time for 11th place here which i'm thoroughly happy about i'm thoroughly happy about. i thought it would have been even worse but 11th place in a mclaren honda with jensen barton is pretty damn good by my standard so two uh, two seconds and seven tenths behind off pole so that's uh, that's a lot of time to lose but uh, only 11th place so that's quite interesting that i've lost a lot of time but still managed to only get still managed to get 11th place by losing so much time still so i'm pretty confident ahead of the race that hopefully we can get our first points in the mclaren straight away on race one let's get into the race So 
So it is race time here for the Australian Grand Prix. The first time we'll be doing a race in the McLaren Honda as Jensen Button. Well, what can I say? I'm just hoping that we can get points. That will be the aim for today. It's going to be a two-stop race, option, option, prime. I'm thinking about going options uh, for both the first two stints instead of doing a counter or what I was doing in Ferrari last season. Because the thing with this McLaren is it's not really fast enough to go consistently at prime tyre pace in the middle of the race. And then it's not fast enough to gain the time back on options at the end. So I'm thinking we just go option, option and just go as fast as we can every single lap from the start of the Grand Prix. That will be the best kind of strategy, I feel. I don't think going conservative any part of the race will be the kind of thing we do here yeah. Uh, in the McLaren Honda. So we're revving up now to five red lights for the first race of this season. What can we do today with this McLaren Honda? We go to five red lights for Australia and we are off and getting a shocking start once again like we've seen far too many times from season one. Behind two Force Indies now as we gun towards turn one. Can we go down the inside of both of them? Slip it in between. We have banged tyres a little bit with Hulkenberg there on the right hand side I think. But we've just managed to get past both the Force Indies. The entire grid barrels towards that hairpin corner here in Australia. We've got Perez just on my left hand side but we make a dive bomb move. Really late move down the inside of I think that's Grosjean and Kafiat. Kafiat goes a little bit wide as Grosjean punts him off there a little bit but a very very aggressive move there on both those cars and we have to make aggressive moves this season on all air cars. When we, ha when we see the opportunity we have to go for it and we have to make it a very punchy move here in the McLaren otherwise if we're too kind to these AI that cars this season we really won't be making any leeway on them. So right behind Felipe Nasa now he's in 8th place. He's done well to get 8th place but we're going to spoil the party we've gone down the inside hit the apex hit the wide corner curb on the left hand side squeezed him out but he's going to start coming back at us you can see he gets some good slipstream is he going to try and make me maybe make a move around the outside yes he is but we just stick it down the inside he's gone horribly wide and he's lost three places in the span of a straight and a corner so he's going to be kicking himself there trying to make the move around the outside it just it wasn't ever going to work really if he did make that move I would have had to start clapping mid commentary at him because that would have been absolute worldly of a pass there but no he hasn't made it we're still in eighth place which is absolutely amazing so far in McLaren Honda with my pace so that's awesome to see right behind Massa now looks like he's being bogged down a little bit by his teammate and Ricardo I think it is and it is now as we got into lap two right behind them they're being bogged down massively by Ricardo there and we're making a dive bomb move down the inside of Felipe Massa and we've overtaken a Williams here and a McLaren so I think it might be a bit short-lived because you can see right now he's in the mirrors he's getting the slipstream he's surely going to come right past us there he is right out around the outside and he's going to get seventh place back and this time we can't fight him like we did with the sound but we tried very hard on the exit of that corner but look at that he's already getting away from us but uh we tried it and we did overtake him momentarily there but uh yeah Massa getting bogged down so much by his teammate and Ricardo up front we can see a replay now you can see he sees me in the mirrors dives out the little way on the left hand side so thank you to him for giving me the respect for that but uh I'm not going to be too kind to him so I just dive straight down there but he's going to get me back on the slip stream so really in the end it was a kind of half-hearted move there because he just gets right past us once more with the down with the straight line speed and dra less drag he has on that Williams package so uh, we're doing still well here in eighth place you can see the train behind us right now so we're gonna have to be wary of that hopefully we can try and stick behind Massa and uh, we'll see what we can do but now onto lap three Perez has overtaken us into turn one but we're gonna go immediately right back round the outside of him to re-overtake eighth place so Perez with DRS did overtake us there but we've done well to go right back round the outside of him so uh, he would have been uh, pretty happy with that move into turn one but then he just looked behind him and saw the McLaren steaming right past him so here's a replay right round the outside Perez does well to get us on the DRS there but he just made the corner a bit too tight for himself and we just went right round the outside of him to get 8th place back now onto lap 4 now We'll see where it's still in 8th place. We've got a little bit of a gap to Perez behind us as he struggled off that turn 1 from the previous lap. And you can see, we can actually still see the cars ahead of us, which is a plus point. I think that's going to be a trend that if we can't see the cars ahead of us, we probably can't have a chance of ever overtaking them in the race. So we can still see Massa ahead and we can see Ricardo there, who's just been overtaken by Massa. So I'm not too sure. Maybe we can maybe have a look at Ricardo. It looks like he's not having that much pace up ahead in stint 1 so far in this race. So we might have to look at that later on in the Grand Prix but on to lap 7 now just getting the gravel a little bit but it's time to maybe think about pit stops I think we've got a few cars in the pits right now we're going to continue on one more lap I feel just to try and stretch these tyres out a little bit more they're still feeling okay there's a little bit of under as you saw through the final corner but we're not, right now we're up to 6th place probably the highest we'll ever be in this race so far so let's cherish it guys 
but uh, Ricardo right now in fifth place, as I said, we could think about getting him because he's not had amazing pace. He's still pretty much there. We can just about see him there right ahead, ahead, ahead of us in the corner. So we'll have to see about that. But now into lap eight through the second last corner. And we're going to come in for our pit stop now. So we're going to, as I said at the beginning of the uh, Grand Prix, we're going to go on to another set of option tyres because, you know, in Ferrari season one, we went on the prime stars, uh, prime tyres quite a lot in the middle of the race. But I feel like it's just not worth it in the McLaren. We're not going to have enough pace on the primes and then enough pace on the options at the end of the race to kind of counteract the time lost on the prime tyre. So I just feel we should go on the fastest tyre possible every single time onto the option tyre straight away in the middle of the lap and we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, we've made our pit stop right now. We'll see what we can do as we come out of the pits. There's a uh, manor car right there that we are lapping at the moment. So the man is thankfully slower than us. So we're not the slow, dead slowest car on the grid. But now onto lap nine, going onto lap 10 by the end of the pit straight. We're in 13th place at the moment. You can see people in the pits now. So we will be going up to hopefully what will be eighth place. Yes, it is up to eighth place place there back in the Grand Prix so thankfully we haven't lost any places after making our pit stop that's always the worry that we make an early pit stop earlier than a few cars and we lose time and lose a position but thankfully we are still in eighth place in this Grand Prix with uh, a few laps to go with quite a few laps to go but now we cut on to lap 16 quite some way into the Grand Prix you must say six laps later and really unfortunately nothing happened we stay in eighth place we had pretty good pace on these option tires in the second set pretty good pace so we just cut on cut out those six laps where nothing was really happening I was just by myself just putting in the lap times consistent lap times I must say and it was feeling pretty good the car wasn't feeling too bad three one wings definitely I think was the sweet spot for me here in Australia at least for me I think maybe if you're able to kind of uh, handle the understeer you could have gone with two one or maybe one one but I'm a driver who really doesn't respond to understeer I like a very responsive front end and I like to be controlled of the car in that way so I went with three one and I think that's my sweet spot here but now we come to lap 18 now two laps later We've got Marcus Ericsson up ahead in ninth place. We're 10th at the moment as people are yet to make their pit stops. But later on into the same lap, right behind Ericsson now on the Sauber. Can we try and make a move on the right-hand side of the circuit? Going side by side, squeezed onto the grass a little bit by Marcus. Going down the inside and we have made the move on the Sauber there. And so just showing we do have some good pace on the start of these prime tyre stints. And we're actually closing up on the Torosa ahead, which is signs. But uh, yeah, we have got Ericsson there. So I believe a lot of people are yet to make their pit stops. So hopefully we will be getting back up into eighth place. I think up ahead, this is going to be the Torosa pitting right now. I think it should be. Yes, he does. So he goes into the pits and we should get this eighth place back. So we will get be getting eighth place back. Thankfully, we won't be losing positions in the Grand Prix. But look at this on the mini map. Someone else in the pits and we're up to seventh now. It's I think it's Verstappen in the pits. Verstappen in the pits. Raikkonen now is uh, behind us. So Raikkonen was uh, on track behind us, not yet to make his pit stop. But something has gone on with Raikkonen or maybe Verstappen or something like that because we're in seventh place. So we gained a position out of nowhere and we're in seventh now right behind Ricardo who's in sixth and he's not too far away so we could think about catching him as I said earlier on in the episode so now here on lap 20 we've got nine laps to go we've genuinely had the pace to try and close up on Ricardo so can we try and make a move later on into this lap with DRS going through these next few corners obviously we're going on lighter fuel so it's a little bit easier to kind of control the car at this point but coming through to these next few last few corners you can see Ricardo does have superior traction on the ex exit of the corners but we are closing up on the high speed sections here at Australia with the DRS open we are actually closing up on the Red Bull Renault with the with DRS on the Honda engine so that's pretty nice to see and we go through turn one he's going woefully slow here through turn one so can we make a move down this next straight we will have DRS on this straight as well you can see Raikkonen in the background so we have to be aware of him later on the Grand Prix but we make a diving move down the inside of Ricardo lock up on the tyre we make a very aggressive squeezing move to make sure he doesn't get us on the inside and we have got up into seventh place but it may be short-lived because Raikkonen is right behind us now into lap 23 you can see in our mirrors there on the right mirror Raikkonen there I'm not going to put up too much of a fight there's no use there's really no use so he goes right past us I'm not going to make a fuss. There's no point trying to fight him. He is going to be much, much faster than us through the corners and the straights. So Raikkonen up into sixth place there. I'm back down to seventh at the moment. So I think we could try and hold on to seventh, which would be absolutely amazing here. And we are doing so, so far on to lap 29. Nico Rosberg has won the Grand Prix so far, but Ricardo is right behind us. 
He's actually going side by side with us into the high speed section. Will he make the move on the last lap? No, he won't. I go down the inside, defend quite well, stay on the racing line. And Ricardo has made the same mistake as he did at the beginning of the Grand Prix. And he's lost out there. So he will stay in eighth place. And I will be coming through the last few corners now. Come on, McLaren Honda. We will be coming through for seventh place, which will be a brilliant, I think, I think six points, I think that is. So that will be absolutely fantastic. I said at the beginning of this episode, it will be our, our, our goal is to get over 100 points in this season. If we keep this up for the rest of the season, we will pass that with uh, at least a few more points than 100. So we come through. This is going to be seventh place in the McLaren Honda with Jensen Button. That is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Jensen's pretty happy there. And we've got six well-earned points in McLaren Honda here at the Australian Grand Prix. Absolutely fantastic there. Seventh place. What a race, what a performance there from us. And just confirmation there, if anyone was doubting me, Legend AI, I'm human, 7th place, that is awesome. Our teammate Fernando Alonso in the beginning of the Grand Prix had an ERS failure, so he DNF. So really great to beat him today by mild and come in 7th place for 6 points. That's absolutely amazing, guys. If you did enjoy that first episode of our Jensen Button career mode, smash that like button, guys. It would be absolutely awesome if we could match yesterday's episode, the finale, and try and get over 3,500 likes for this episode. That would be absolutely amazing, guys. But if you did enjoy that, comment below what you thought. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for daily Formula 1 content. But, oh boy, the start, the, the start of a long road. This season will be long. We're not going to be doing daily episodes by any stretch of the imagination. I just, simply, it's impossible with the amount of editing I'm trying to do with this series. So it will be about maybe two or three episodes a week. So bear with me, guys. Just keep on looking at 7 p.m. UK time every time on this channel. For the episodes. There will be other content coming up on this channel. I'm going to be bringing back stuff like the F1 Manager game, so that's going to be something that lots of you guys wanted to see, so that will be back with episode 3 of that. There will be other stuff like obviously co-op with Ben continuing on, online stuff from F1. Let me know in the comments guys what else you want to see on this channel from F1 2015. Obviously I will be trying my hardest now, now that I have some time to make the other videos, apart from just career mode. I will be bringing out a full video about all my career mode setups from the Ferrari season, and also hopefully some some breaking tips and thorough tips later on uh, eventually because you guys are still tweeting me about those videos so apologies I haven't brought them out so far but I will be trying to now that we're doing these uh, episodes probably about three a week for the Jensen Button career mode but once again give it a like if you did enjoy it comment below what you thought if you're new around here then do subscribe for daily Formula 1 content so guys I hope you enjoyed this first episode of the Jensen Button career mode hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your day I've been Ever, and I'll see you guys next time goodbye <laughs>